Right guys, we're drawn from artists today and we're looking at the early work of Andy Warhol. This comes before his screen prints, his soup cans, his work of Marilyn Monroe and all that stuff. And this is his early illustration. And what we see here is we see an image where we've got some quite blotchy lines, not a continuous smooth line and a bit of colour fill. Now, what you will need for today's task is a piece of plastic. I think a carrier bag, a thick carrier bag would do the job. It doesn't have to be clear, but I'm going to show you like a trace technique first of all. Um, this is just a, a thin off cut. You need water-based felt tip pens. And by water-based, most felt tip pens are, you have to avoid anything that says permanent on it, like this fancy little fine liner, sharpies, that type of things are permanent. They will not work for this task. Viros will not work for the task. So here I have my piece of plastic and I'm going to put it um, on top of my image and at this stage I'm just going to trace. I'm going to work rapidly and I'm going to draw around this blue butterfly here. If I go off the line a bit I'm not too fussed. I don't think Warhol's being mega accurate. I'm putting the splodges on it. I'm working rapidly because I want to be able to print from it. So there it is on top of the image. Now you can take the piece of plastic, make sure it goes down once. I'm using the back of my hand, fingernail, and I'm pressing down. When I lift it up, you can see there's still a little bit of a ghost image on here, but most of the felt tip now has transferred onto the piece of paper. And we have this really blotchy kind of print come from it. If you can see, if I zoom in a bit closer, you can see the quality of the line that we've got there is a little bit different from a drawn line that you get from the same pen. Now I'm working on photocopy paper. I'm not working on anything fancy today. I have tried it just before on cartridge paper, but the thickness of the cartridge paper is not quite as absorbent. So I did find that working back on a thinner, cheaper quality paper has actually worked well. Now what's nice about this image, I can just wipe any dirty bits off here, is it's a collection of, of little things together. You might want to change the imagery and not work from butterflies. You might have some pictures you want to use instead. So I've taken that one and I'm going to just pop it down. Press it with the back of my hand. Now it might be that it takes a few goes to get this to work. And you might discover that there are issues with the pen you're using. It might be that it's just not printing and you need to show us how it's going and we can come up with some ideas and try and work out why it's not working. Not everything we do works the first time. And one of the things about an artist is that perseverance of trying things out and trying to see what works. Now Warhol does this with other imagery. He does it with shoes, he does it with um, hearts, lips, that type of thing. And here I'm just going to take the butterfly image to begin with. So I'm not arranging them in exactly the same position. I am arranging them in quite a regular pattern. You see, if I hold it quite firmly, I can lift it and put it back down again. Now they're working quite well. So if you wanted to introduce some of the colour, I have a big pot of felt tips knocking around the house. They're not the best felt tips in the world. I'm just going to pull out a couple of colours that I think would look quite nice in this image. And I'm going to give them a go. Now on Warhol's butterflies, he's got a sort of a single colour on each butterfly. You could say, could you put a little bit of um, watercolour on? You could, but remember, it will make the felt, um, the fine liner line or the felt tip black line run a little bit. It's got a little bit of blue in the body. I've done that in quite a patchy way. I don't think the colour I've picked there is the best colour for this. So I'm going to pick a different colour. Now I could go and put different colours into each of these butterflies, but I want it to kind of have the look of a Warhol, so I'm sticking with a single colour on each butterfly for the moment. Now obviously if I go over lines where I've got black felt tip printed onto it, it will smudge, so a yellow will end up looking a bit like a manky green kind of colour. It will lose its freshness, but if you sort of work around them, that's quite a nice technique. So as you can see, it looks quite like a Warhol butterfly picture. Now you could go on and develop it. You could draw things into the background. You could arrange them in more regular rows like the beautiful butterflies in Manchester Museum. You might have seen them. The Victorians collected butterflies and insects and put them in, in grid arrangements, often with a little bit of classification written below them. 
So you might want to, to think about the context in which you develop your work. You might want to move away from butterfly imagery. Earlier on, I came across a first animal book, which I have in my house. And in here, I found this picture of a cockatoo and I just thought this looks great fun to try this technique. So if you're going to do something that might be a bit more fiddly, you might want to blue tack um, your piece of plastic or just tape it with a teeny bit of masking tape. Remember, you don't want to tape into a book because it will rip the surface. But here I have a teeny bit of masking tape. I'm going to just pop it on the corner. So that just means it's going to secure it a little bit while I do my drawing. I'm still going to hold it. So on here, I'm just going to draw around my cockatoo. I know this pen is working quite well. Now the beak is quite dark, so I'm going to fill in the beak. But you can see the, the liquid, the water in here, separating onto the surface. So remember, I've got to work really rapidly. I'm building that up. Sound effects as I go. It's got kind of like a wrinkly bit around its eye. It's got some roughly feathers onto its neck. Now I've kind of gone for quite a flowing technique there. I've looked at quite a bit of Warhol's work from his era, so I know he draws in that way. So you might need to go back and have a little look. So I draw my cockatoo, just going to move it out of the way. I'm going to work on the same piece of paper, but in a different section. Taking the cockatoo image, a bit of tape, move it off, turn it over. And if you don't turn it over, do you know what will happen? You put your hand down on it and you'll smudge all the ink that's on the top surface. You've got to make sure that, that it's in contact with the paper. And I lift it up and there's my cockatoo. And just like I've done with these images, I'm going to work into it, look back at the reference material. Hopefully you've noticed something about the reference material and the image, that they are two different directions because you've printed on one side and turned it over. And the marks I'm putting into here are quite loose. Remember, this yellow will go a little bit of a manky kind of colour. It, it mixes too much with the other black line that's below. It's got some little yellow sections into that. It's got a really fine blue rim around the eye. And you put a little bit of blue around it. And I want to make that beak stand out a little bit. So I'm reaching into the pot of uh, felt tips. And I'm going to darken it up. But I do think the centre of the eye needs a little bit of work. So I'm going to just build up the eye. So you can see how you can take the technique and start applying it to your own imagery. You don't have to trace something. You could just draw freehand onto the piece of plastic and then transfer it down. And any imagery you want. Obviously, if you're going to write something, you need to write it backwards to begin with. So if you don't know your backwards writing, you can obviously flip it on a computer or a phone these days and print. Give it a go.